Hey, everybody, welcome to another Thrasher Opera House Presents podcast. And we are talking today about Chatham Rabbits. We're going to be performing a 506 session coming up on Friday, April the 5th. So happy to be joined by Sarah from Chatham Rabbits. Hey, how are you, Sarah? Hello, I'm great. Um, we're excited to get back to Wisconsin and just. I guess a little over a month now. We're super stoked about it and glad to be chatting with you today. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the, the first question I get asked when I talk about Chatham Rabbits, they're like, what? What's the, what's the name? And there is a great story behind it. So I want you to tell it. Okay. Yeah. We also, even in our home state of North Carolina, we still get asked this question. Um, so we uh, are from Chatham County, North Carolina. It's right in the center of the state. And Chatham County used to be the meat rabbit capital of the world. Okay. So people would come from all over to Chatham County back in like the early 1900s. It kind of was winding down around the 1920s or so, but people would would travel to Chatham County specifically to hunt these massive wild rabbits that were just like very plentiful. So that's one piece of the story. And then the other piece of the story is that um, my bandmate slash husband and I, Austin, um, when we uh, got married and bought our first house, we moved to this very small cotton mill village in Chatham County called Bynum. Okay. And we learned that back in the early 1900s, the cotton mill that was the, you know, the employer and the sustainer of the entire town, they actually had a string band and a basketball team and like a kids a community group, like lots of community organizations. And they were all called the Chatham Rabbits baseball team or Chatham Rabbits string band. And so when we moved into this house, we started learning about the history of Chatham Rabbits from our neighbors. And then, and this is the real kicker, we found out that the guitar player for Chatham Rabbit String Band was the patriarch of the house that we had just bought. And we were like only the second family to live there since um, the Riddle family had lived there for many years many years. And so the name just chose us, I guess, but it is definitely like a topic of conversation. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of like destiny, right? It's just like, man, this is meant to be. Hey, I mean, it was really nice to just have a name kind of just happen. We did not have to hem and haul and stress over it. Like it just happened. And there's, um, it, it's a good conversation starter. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, you talk about destiny and, and the destiny of of Austin and you was completely different. You know, a few years ago, Austin, a financial advisor, you a, a music teacher. And then you said, you know what, we're going to quit those jobs and we're just going to become musicians. Yeah, we're like, what doesn't that sound fun and easy, you right. know? Um, yeah, I used to be a K through eight music teacher. Austin was a financial advisor. We just had very different lives. Um, and then it's, it's coming up on six years that we, we were just unfulfilled and kind of unhappy and, uh, wanted to see what would happen if we took the music thing further. Cause we were just playing at bars and stuff on the side for fun. Um, and we were like, you know, what the heck, let's, let's try it. Worst case scenario. Like we can go back. I'll keep my certifications. He can keep his, we'll go back to our old jobs, but uh, yeah, six years have gone by and everything is going really, really well. So we're just like going to keep at it, I guess. You have so many great stories and I want to go back four years ago uh, because you take a trip to California to go get a sprinter van that you guys found online to start touring yeah. in and then COVID hits. And then you put together these uh, kind of tours, stay at home tours. Talk about that. Yeah, that was so insane. So, and it's crazy that we're talking about this. Like when we're today, as we were recording it, it's the one year or sorry, the four year anniversary of that whole experience. So yeah, we flew out to Las Vegas to buy this Sprinter van that we found at like this great deal. And we were going to be traveling with a sound engineer and full band. And we were about to release a record. And like the we had a lot of forward momentum, um, getting a lot of like, name recognition and stuff. And it just, everything felt like it was really happening. But then of course the pandemic hit and 
everything on our calendar and everything we had worked for was just kind of ripped out from under us like every other artist. Um, and so we, and we had this van with this massive new payment on it. And we were just kind of like internally freaking out. Sure. So we uh, decided to try something. We called it the stay at home tour. And yeah, we just like hooked up a trailer and some solar panels and our sound system. And we took submissions from people for their, like their neighborhoods. And we would like put it in Google maps and see, okay, does this neighborhood have a flat surface or some shade? Or, you know, is there a contact here, like a person that'll be our neighborhood liaison? And we did 194 neighborhoods oh. in 2020. Um, and it was amazing. And I had no idea the impact that playing these concerts would have to us now. Like we just played our biggest probably our biggest like North Carolina show of the year. We just played it a couple of weeks ago and there were probably a huge chunk of people that were there at that show because they saw us in their neighborhood. So I just, I didn't think that, or I don't know, I'm so amazed at the ripple effect that those shows had. It's just, um, this is amazing stories that we've got here now. Uh, we should probably talk about the music though, right? Because that's what you all are coming here for. <laughs> uh, I, I love it. Uh, but but tell us about your musical background. Like you said, both you and Austin started all just playing, you know, bars and that. But obviously, this has been a, a lifetime thing for you both. Yeah, we both um, are lifelong music lovers and players. Um, I grew up. My parents are not very musical, but they really instilled a passion for a live performance and like took my brothers and I to go see all kinds of live shows. And Austin grew up with an uncle who was very into bluegrass music, taught him how to play guitar. And um, we just are very, very attached to the music that is, um, you know, a part of the landscape here. Like everybody at least knows one person that plays banjo or fiddle or whatever. Um, so, that's kind of one component, but then the other pieces, we really um, take our songwriting really seriously. And that's become even more so than the um, nod to bluegrass and old time. Like we are really trying to move forwards as a songwriter, you know, a song centered band. Um, and we love artists like Gillian Welch and Dave Rawlings and other North Carolinians. Um, they used to be called Mandolin Orange. Now they're called Watch House. Um, but there's just such a rich history and community of other songwriters that we really love. And, um, we, we love to write about the South cause that's what we know. Right. We love to write about our families. Um, and we are, as we get older, we're finding that we're writing more and more introspective songs and, um, it's, yeah, it's been really uh, a great experience getting to play these new songs out. And we're so excited to bring them to the opera house because anytime we get to play an opera house, no matter where, just the acoustics, the vibe, and we love Wisconsin. So we're excited. Well, we can't wait to have you on that. Let's talk. You mentioned the world, the word um, old time music, you know, in when you're kind of talking about that uh, considered old time music, because this really is music that brings generations together, right? Because young kids are digging it, you know, older folks are digging it as too. And, and the, the people in between all, all get it. It's just really communal, the kind of music that you guys are, are bringing out there for everybody. I, I mean, I like to think so. And I think our shows are a really great representation of that because we have, the other actually the other week we played a show in Richmond, Virginia, and uh, there was a three year old little boy in the audience and his parents. Our show, I don't think, started till nine, but his parents brought him and he stayed through the whole thing and he's singing all the words, the songs. And then we have um, Eve. She's one of our like fans that travels around and follows our music and follows our shows. And she's 84. And so awesome. it's like it's so awesome to have that um, wide range of ages and we also just really um we try to be intentional about being a space like our we make our concerts a space where anyone regardless of uh your background your political affiliation your taste in music or whatever we hope that like an hour and a half with us or however long we play you know is is leaves you better than when you left and that it's a wholesome um you know encouraging time so you got this tour coming up. Talk a little bit about what's uh, what's going on with that. You're going to be kind of kind of hitting all over. 
yeah, we have a few more days at home and then we're headed up to the Northeast. So we're going to be in New York City and um, Western Mass and all over the place. And then um, we're making our way out to y'all um, in April and we'll be, I, I can't, I can't give away too much information, but we are, after we visit you guys, we're going on tour with a, let's just say a Grammy award winning, a two-time Grammy award winning bluegrass musician that I'm very fond of. So that's going to be announced soon. And yeah, we have like a lot of new songs and I guess they're all going to be new for your audience, but <laughs> we've got a lot of new songs that we're going to be playing at Thrasher Opera House. So it's going to be so good. Yeah, we can't wait to have you coming up on Friday, April the 5th. Uh, tickets available at thrasheroperahouse.com. Sarah, if people want to find out more information about Chatham Radams, what's the easiest way to do so? The easiest way is to follow us on Instagram. It's just Chatham underscore rabbits on Instagram. And, um, our, you know, our website, chathamrabbits.com. There's also like a link to our mailing list and that sort of thing. But Instagram is where we go to post like the chaotic tour van uh, bus life. And we have a lot of farm animals at our, at our home and, um, in North Carolina. And we have a really obnoxious and wonderful pet Turkey. So he gets the spotlight on the Instagram a lot. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's really great, but I'll tell you what, we, we will be posting about our trip to Wisconsin too and touring through and, uh, all the cheese curds and new Glarus beer that I will be drinking. And uh, juicy, hazy IPAs, if I remember ah, the song, right? Yes, yes. Good, good memory, yes. Although I need to write a song about the new Glarus. Um, oh, gosh, the raspberry tart beer. Okay. It, that's what I get every time we're driving through Wisconsin. I'm like, I have to stop and get some of that. It's so tasty. So, yeah, Sounds, we're pumped. We'll, we'll put a note in it to make sure that we have that on okay. yeah, <laughs> here for you. Hey, Sarah, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate you joining us on the podcast, and we'll see you in a couple I, of weeks. It's my pleasure. We'll see you guys on April 5th. Take care.